it's pretty surreal. You gotta, you have to stay humble going in and putting your badge at the gate every day um, and driving past the signs. It's good, and there's a good mission uh, trying to educate and bring science and bring that into future generations as well. NASA's mission is very important uh, in the way that the, the lesson that we've learned from the, the last half century of space exploration is that Do flip. the more we leave home, the more we learn about our own planet, where it came from, where we're at at this particular point in time, and most importantly, where we're going in the future. NASA's largest mission right now is Artemis, which is our return to the moon. Artemis, the sister uh, of Apollo. And you know, when we went to Apollo, we got some fantastic imagery. It did extend the reach of our space program to everyone, not just you know Americans. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And that was broadcast live, that grainy footage, you know. But a lot's changed since then. And now we have YouTube and we have 4K HD video and we have a culture that needs things now, right? And so when we return to the moon, it's paramount that we're able to still, in the same way that we did with Apollo, share that experience. Yeah, that makes sense. We're trying to create space internet by bringing interconnectivity to satellites in space. So as opposed to point to point links, Satellites are able to communicate to each other and to the ground, so we're able to route data faster and more efficiently. The fundamental reason is that we're leaving most of our data in space right now, so uh, your satellite's taking pictures all the time, and a lot of those pictures get lost in memory. You don't have a lot of storage on board to store those pictures, and so we can't offboard them down to Earth fast enough. So we need higher throughput to be able to preserve our science data. The work that Kyle is doing in the laboratory right now uh, will be launched in December to the International Space Station and we'll be able to try it out on their communication systems. So it'll be a test bed of sorts, uh, but at an orbital scale. Um, so again, he's in the critical path uh, of the project and, and contributing heavily to that. So we couldn't do it without him, in fact. Getting a new intern class in every year is, is a great shot of adrenaline here at NASA. Just, just from a cultural perspective, um, because our, our problems are very large and they linger for a long time. And so getting fresh eyes on a problem that we've been struggling with for a while uh, is instrumental in, in, in the perspective and making sure that we're looking at it from all angles. And I think that translates to the classroom you know, as well where I can bring some of the material that, that uh, we're working with here in the laboratory and, and put it out in front of a class and see what they think about it. At least show them what we've thought about it in the past and it's a good way to incubate some new ideas and, and new solutions on things. Here in particular, they're really open to what the interns are interested in. So if you have a particular interest and you wanna pursue this field of research maybe that like goes up with your graduate school research or something like that, you're able to do that. Um, I was sort of guided into HGTN, hey, we need this feature. I'm happy to say I'm actively working, contributing. I'm not going and I'm not a gopher going and getting things, you know. Hal's been fantastic uh, in his internship here. And I, I attribute a lot of that to uh, obviously himself and, and the work that he's put in and becoming the engineer that he is and really taking advantage of the opportunities that he's had at Akron, particularly the co-op program, the real world experience, which is more than just the technical, how to work on a team and interact with people and formulate the right path and then implement it in the end. I think of him more as a colleague than an intern in that way. It's actually pretty crazy how many professors at Akron are involved with NASA in general. Um, off the top of my head, there's probably five professors that I know that are either adjunct professors or they're full-time professors and they do all the research with NASA. So that's pretty significant within one department of engineering. I was quite surprised to learn, oh, he works for NASA, oh, he's, got a, he's got a research project at NASA, maybe you can go work in his lab, go work in his lab. So I was quite surprised by all that. That's awesome. It is the science and the engineering and, and all of that, but it's also the inspiration and, and having a, a culture here that champions uh, the pursuit of truth and, and science. And, and it's, uh, it gives us a, a culture worth living for.